I only think now, looking back on it, I don't know what was in Freddie's mind when he sang it. What was in his mind was probably not my relationship stuff, which is what the song was really written about. Freddie, I think at that time, probably knew that he was under threat from this awful disease, which was going to take him eventually. Good morning to Mr. Brian May. Hey. Yeah! Woo-hoo. Morning, Brian. Good morning, Chris. You look amazing, I've got to tell you. Well, so do you. Yeah, well, you're looking great. You're fit, aren't you? You got fit. Damn yeah. good for you. Hats off to you. For me, uh, Back to the Light is the album. For me, my favourite track on it, and I've told you this before, is is Driven By You, which I love that track. Was that Had you already done that track and then the Ford came knocking? No, it all came about because of the man from Ogilvy and Mather, who were the advertising agency for Ford Motor Cars at that time. I met the guy purely by accident, sitting by a swimming pool in Los Angeles. Sounds very glamorous, but <laughs> we were actually working pretty hard. And he said, do you want to... Um, he said, have you ever done a, uh, a song for a, an ad, a TV ad? And I said, no, never. It's not my kind of thing, really. And he said, well, would you like to? And I said, well, give me a, give me a clue as to what it is. He said, we have this slogan, everything we do, we do for you, which he later modified to everything we do is driven by you. So as soon as I had driven by you, it's got this kind of rhythm to it, and I could hear it, driven by you. And um, I kind of, I immediately went, I said, hold, hold on, went off to the bathroom, which is what they call lose in America, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> with my little tape recorder, and sang most of the song, I could just hear it in my head. So that's the genesis of the song. But when I heard Driven By You, everything I do is Driven By You, I thought about relationships, and the song, of course, although it was for the Ford Motor Company in the beginning, and still is if you want it to be, what I was hearing was the relationship, and you say to your partner, I'm driven by you, and your partner says, oh, I'm driven by you, and there's a whole sort of world of, of meaning there, and relationships are tough, as we all know. Most of this record, the Back to the Light record, is about relationships and how things happen inside you when you're trying to deal with relationships, so it gave me a trigger, and you know what? I put it out, I sang it, produced it, played everything on it, put it out, and it was a hit, mm-hmm. and, th- and that's that's the kick that I needed because I didn't have that confidence. You know, I'm in this group called Queen, as you observed, and it's about to die because we're about to lose Freddie, mm. which was really the most major, major thing you can imagine for me because fr- the, the group wasn't just a group for us, it was our family. And losing Freddie was like losing a brother. I'm also losing my dad at the same time. My marriage is breaking up. So what do I do? I try to make music. And the music is very often the way out. It helps, it mm. gets you through. There's, um, I wanted to ask you about the track Too Much Love Will Kill You, which was also a big hit and a, and a beautiful song. Did you record it first and then Queen recorded it? But yes, I did record it first and it was only really intended to be a solo track because it was, in a sense, my way out. It was my thera- therapeutic cry for help, I suppose. I recorded it and it was ready, but I didn't have a solo album at that time, so I didn't really know what to do with it. But I played it to the band, I played it to Freddie, and they all liked it and said, look, this should be a Queen song. This could be very big, could be very Queen-like, because we do kind of big <clears throat> in Queen, and the version I'd done wasn't big. It, as you hear on this album, it's quite sensitive and, and it always stays control. So yes, and uh, suddenly we're doing this thing, and I felt very good about it because I'm relaxed. I've got my own version, I'm not going to touch that. Now we can make the Queen version and go for it. The big guitars, the big you know, entry, the big drum fill, or whatever. And Freddie's singing it. Now, Freddie's singing it. I only think now, looking back on it, I don't know what was in Freddie's mind when he sang it. What was in his mind was probably not my relationship stuff, which is what the song was really written about. Freddie, I think at that time, probably knew that he was under threat from this awful disease, Mm. which was going to take him eventually. So the song at that point became transformed. That happens anyway when Freddie used to sing a song. He would make it his own, but I think in this case it was special. And Freddie was not happy when he discovered that I'd written this song with two other people and we always split everything four ways in Queen. So he went, he went, so I get a quarter of a third of this song, which is less than this this woman who claims to have written it with. He said, I'm not having that. We're not. <laughs> so we didn't put it on the Miracle album. And it sat in the drawer until, well, long after Freddie had gone. Uh, and we put out, we, we well, it was a labor of love. We put together the Made in Heaven album mm-hmm. and that track just fitted right on. So it's a quite an odd story. And in the middle of all that, I sang it 
at the Freddie Tribute show, as you probably know, mm. thinking, I now realise that this song means something different and that's why I'm singing it at the, at the Tribute. Radio X. The Chris Moyle Show.